Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL James Hobby Vlog. Been a little while since I've done one of these, but I am pleased to say that I am back into the swing of hobbying after Ardacon. It's been a long time because of course I've not had much of an opportunity or a purpose really to be getting down and getting some painting done. But that has changed after the big event back in October. And since I've sorted out my house, which was turning into Middle Earth around the course of the convention, I now have a dedicated hobbying space and a painting desk actually which is making doing the painting a lot easier. Now at the moment I'm actually working on a commission job with some Riverdale Knights for Adam Marcel of Blackfire Productions. But what I'm finding with doing this commission work is that in between doing little bits and pieces and to keep me motivated as I'm painting so I don't get bored and so I'm keeping the standard high, it's given me an opportunity to do some touching up and I have continued with the Rohirrim repaint which you can see in front of me. Now this is actually, it's a few more models than the Force, the 500 point Force which I took down to the Beacons of Chester which was a one day non-GBHL counting tournament which I very very um, I'm pleased to say that I, I was the victor which was lovely and if you haven't checked out the Beacons of Chester tournament review and you're into tournament reviews then do go and check that out uh, and that little 500 point event gave me that little bit of extra motivation to just do a little bit of touching up on some of the models that you can see in front of you uh, this force in front of you is just over 550-ish points because there's an extra Son of Ale in there and an extra Outrider which I didn't use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down and I'm going to show you each of these miniatures in a little bit of detail with what I've done with the repaint. So here we go, let's start off with the first model which I want to show off for this repaint and I'm going to show off one of my favourite miniatures in the whole SBG range and that is Urkenbrand. Now if you want to have a little bit of a look and see what Urkenbrand was like before I did the repaint then do go and check out some of the old get buff back reps and the like because I always used him. Let's uh, let's stick him there. Let's get a little bit of a zoom in on this. There we go. So you can see there this is Urken Brand. Now he's one of my favourite miniatures in the range, but he was also one of the first miniatures that I ever painted. And as such, there was a lot of dry brushing going on. You couldn't really see the silver of the armour. Uh, I think I'd, I don't, I think I just painted green between his legs. Um, the gold was a bit brash. The everything was uh, was pretty poor, to be perfectly honest. Nothing had been done to a decent standard and of course since I started painting I feel like I've improved massively absolutely massively so I was really really looking forward to getting some paint on this model like I say I think the pose um, even just sort of the weight and, and sort of, uh, stance of the miniature itself is just gorgeous and lends itself to a really nice paint job uh, and I'm really, really, really chuffed with how well he turned out. Uh, I do think that there's probably a little bit of extra touching up that I could do here and there, um, just to make him that little bit better. Um, so, notably, maybe some bits around the shield and on some bits of the metal. And I'm not 100% happy um, with the kind of plume that's coming out of the back and the crest coming out of his helmet. Um, but on the whole, he does look a million times better and this guy probably deserves just a bit of extra flock on the base as well just to uh, just to show him off so I've been looking forward to repainting Urken Brown I must say for a long 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 time uh, so get the opportunity to do that absolutely brilliant and I actually started off with the armor the armor before I think I think when I first started painting what I would do is I would paint the, all of the armor with uh, like a lead belcher so a dark silver I would then uh, dry brush iron breaker and then I'd put a wash over it and do another dry brush of iron breaker but it, it, it did look poor and like I say if you want to go and do a comparison uh, then there's plenty of footage out there of this guy uh, as I did use him before not looking anywhere near this kind of standard but of course you're probably not going to be bringing Erkan Brown on, on, uh, on foot particularly in my Rohirrim armies because of course I am a cavalry player. Next up I'm going to show you what I did with Mounted Urken Brand. So you can see straight away what I did with my Mounted Urken Brand was take him off that damn plastic horse. 
that plastic horse was doing my head in it really 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 was doing my head in uh, now although again this miniature isn't 100% complete there's a lot of work that I would still want to do with the horse um, you know especially in terms of sort of highlighting up um, on the tail and the mane which I would then want to varnish because these are the bits which you can even see there even though it's had a couple of coats uh, chip very very easily um, but as you can see I worked pretty hard to get this guy up to the same kind of standard as the one on foot and the same kind of principle really um, you know the main issues were before it was pretty much all reliant on dry brushing uh, the cloak hadn't been highlighted to this kind of level. Now you can see that there, there there's a gap between the horse and Erkenbrand himself. What I'm going to try and do is do a couple of like little saddle bag kind of things going off the back of there and do a bit of green stuffing which is something which I've not really done a huge amount of before. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, but again, uh, I mean, apart from the fact that I haven't really finished his horse, I'm really chuffed at how he's turned out, and he looks a million times better than he did before. Uh, so I want to hear in the comments below, you know, do the comparison. What do you think of how my Urkan brand repaints turned out? Remember, these aren't models that I stripped and did a repaint from start. I've literally painted over. Um, what I'd done before and done it in stages as well so I would for example and all of my row here aren't finished but I would for example start off and maybe you know get all their cloaks sorted because that's a big painting area then I'd go around and make sure their hair was sorted and then I'd go around and make sure that their armor was sorted and, and their shields and the like and, and their horses um, so that's Erkan Brown it's one of my favourite um, favourite models and profiles in uh, in my all-mounted Rohan army. Uh, so let's see what else I worked on. Now next up I'm going to show you a model which I was most disappointed with when I first painted it. Now I did a hobby vlog a while ago uh, for my Sons of Ale. For my Sons of Ale. And Sons of Ale were some of the first models um, that I was really, really chuffed about after I did the job on my Three Hunters. And remember the Three Hunters I did when I wasn't very well um, was the first time I'd been able to sort of really spend some good time trying to improve on my painting skills. And that definitely happened. Uh, once I painted the Sons of Ale, it was only right that I gave Ale the young ago. And when I painted him, he I was so disappointed with how he turned out. I was so disappointed. Uh, in particular because, I don't know whether I had a dud one or not, but Ale's face was just an absolute... Let's see if it focuses. Focus. Ale's face was, a, was an absolute nightmare. No, that's not going to do it. Ale's face was a bit of a nightmare, um, sort of getting around the helmet and um, you know a lot of the face seemed to be a bit disfigured. So when coming back to paint this guy, uh, the first thing that I did was um, I actually sort of went for the saddle cloth. You can see that I did a bit of freehand detail in there, um, just copying off what my friend and mentor Shadow, Kev Lawrence of Shadow and Flame did, um, and did those little bits and pieces. I went over the silver armour, uh, and then I also properly finished off the horse. The horse before was one of the big areas I think that was letting Ail the Young down, um, but he looks so, so much better now. Uh, I also did, when I first did him, I did the wooden effect on the uh, on the lance, well the, the throwing spear. Uh, the thing that I was ha really happy with when I painted him was actually the cloak. The cloak was probably the bit that I was the most happy with. Uh, and as you can see really with his repaint, after doing the horse, a lot of it's just been little bits of touching up and little bits of extra detail and kind of really trying to redo redo parts of the face. And I have to say I'm now really happy with how he's turned out. There's enough going on there. Is he 100% finished? No, I think there's a couple of little bits of areas that I would like to do. But now I've done uh, quite a bit of it, particularly his horse, you know, I mean I love, I think that model just in that angle, I try and always keep him facing that way, looks absolutely fantastic without blowing my own trumpet too much. I mean, if I turn him around this way, I'm not as happy, but what does happen is the uh, the shield and the details on the horse kind of draw your eye away from that face a little bit, which is good. Um, so that was the mounted version and then I have the on foot version now again I love this model if we turn him around to the rear that's pretty much how he looked sort of even before I did the repaint um, the main areas were again the horsehair coming from his helmet 
and his face, his face was a big problem. So if I come in a little bit there, uh, can you see that? Let's focus in just about. I've done a bit of work, particularly on the inside of his mouth and his, around his eyes, just to get him looking a bit more polished. But this, this model didn't need as much work as the mounted model, it has to be said. Um, and these guys, uh, you know, he was the leader of my 500 point force. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really happy with, uh, with how they've turned out, especially considering they are a repaint. Now, one group of models that haven't been touched since I did the first ever um, Hobbit Throne of Skulls, I went to my first ever Hobbit Throne of Skulls at Warhammer World, when, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I took the Kingdoms of Men category with my 600 point Rohan army. Uh, one group of models which I got painted up while I was at Warhammer World and I was helped by Alistair King and George Perkins uh, because they were not finished were my Outriders. Now this is not a repainted Outrider. This is the Outriders as they looked foot and mounted until just before, oh, checking them around, until just before Chester. That's kind of how they looked. Uh, so I was really, really keen to, uh, at least with the mounted models, got no intention of these guys getting dismounted where possible, um, of giving them a, uh, a good going over. And one thing that I was really keen on doing was to improve the colour scheme. I really wasn't happy with the colour scheme before. I wanted to bring in a few more reds. Uh, so before, they literally just had black horses that had been dry brushed with a sharpty bone. And then they just had a few colours on there, including their face. But now... We've gone for this dark, kind of chocolate brown horse. We've got the lighter colour of the leather for all of their reins and straps. Uh, one thing that I wanted to do as well to really sort of um, differentiate them and, and show that they uh, have a special status almost was to give them this kind of check pattern um, on their saddle cloth itself. Obviously I've redone the cloaks. The plumes, I actually went for a kind of white colour rather than the kind of more bone colour that you see on some of the heroes or the, the more blondy kind of colour. And I wanted to get more reds and sort of dark reds, uh, dark red leather uh, armour on them um, with the kind of brass colour uh, being the predominant metal colour uh, on them. Now these guys again aren't finished, there, is, there, is, there are plenty of highlights uh, that I want to do on them. But this is kind of how they've turned out. I'm really happy with the faces and the uh, the eyes in particular. If I can just get him in there. There we go. So that's one of them. I'm going to pop him back there. And let's bring in another one to show off. So I really like this pose where he's firing his bow. Spinning around. So you can see how the, the leather armor is a bit more red. I used Doomball Brown for that and then I've used, um, it's called, what's it called? Balthazar Gold um, I think it's called. Balthazar Gold is a really good kind of brass color. If you use Balthazar Gold and then and then do a very 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 fine highlight of Runefang Steel, I think it gives a really good kind of brass effect. So there's another Outrider, really really chuffed with the faces. I think that um, I've, I've done a bit of work because they're some of my favorite models. Um, in terms of poses and the like, I've done a lot of work to try and make them be as good a standard as uh, heroes, and yet they're not they're not quite there, but they're getting there, which is important. So you can see there. So let me know below what you think of the scheme. I was very keen to sort of bring in sort of the more reds and earthy browns to go next to the greens. I think green against red always looks really cool, and that's very sort of Rohirrim like as it were. You can see that their bases haven't been touched. Um, I will be doing more on the bases. But here we go, final final guy. So we've got two of them in the same pose. Let me know what you think about the Outriders. Some people um, aren't huge fans of the Outriders of course because you're sacrificing that defence and uh, and you can't go up to the fight for. Uh, but for just being able to sit them on objectives uh, which is a big part of the game and sort of reliably know that they're not going to run away if you do get broken with your kind of small force I think it's pretty good and the 3 plus shoot value is uh, is handy as well even though it's a strength 2 bow they're not going to do a huge amount during the game um, but they're going to do enough they're going to give you enough of a different option 
Um, so there we go, those are the Outriders, those are the Outriders, please let me know what you think below. Uh, and a lot of the rest of the Rohirrim repaint was actually to do with the horses, so I'm not going to show you Sons of Ale and the like because they are not a repaint, um, but I'll show you where I've got up to with the riders. Uh, mostly I focused on sort of green stuff in and painting the horses, the horses are of course a large part of um, you know, I'd already done the cloaks and I'd done the wood effect and I've added some bits and pieces to them. Um, just a few little extra details, but green stuffing the gaps in their horses and doing their horses was quite important. So let's show you a few different ones here. I'll show you the first two, which are just kind of the white slash light grey horses. Uh, this one here with the black mane and I highlighted up the mane exactly the same as I did do when I did Bayorn actually. Um, which was using a mix of uh, what's it called? Baylon Brown, Baylor Brown, which is like, kind of like a yellowy brown. Um, I'm mixing that with the black and doing a dry brush of that. Uh, so you can see here some very different colours. Again, you know, these guys are not finished, these are not close to being finished with the repaint, but I'm enjoying the fact that I can just do those little bits of uh, touching up in between jobs. So, for example, in my in the commission that I'm doing for Adam Marcel, uh, the Rivendell Knights that I'm doing for him have the red cloaks. So as I do the red cloaks, I am applying reds and redoing the reds on the shields. So like, so again, another brown horse here. I've gone over, I've gone over um, some of the uh, brass as well, the Balthazar gold. I think previously I'd used a different, I think I used like a warp block bronze and I highlighted up to Genna's gold, but I actually think the brass color I prefer so I've done a little bit of that um, so I'll show you some of these uh, just so you can see some of the variety as well in the horses uh, this horse is not finished in terms of the highlights uh, but you can kind of get a good idea of the of the scheme and kind of what we're going for um, I'm really looking forward to going over the armor of the riders of Rohan because uh, I think it's the, a lot of the armor and cloth, whether you know leather or the metallic colours, I think those are the main areas that I want to really to bring these guys on. Uh, because apart from that, I'm pretty happy with them. I, I mean, I was quite happy with them when I did them. Uh, the bits I weren't as happy with. Let's just bring in some of these together. So these are the sort of more black horses, more dark browns, more dark brown horse there just give you a bit of an idea of some of the variety of them um, and one more here like I say just gives you a bit of an idea of some of the variety so we've gone for a bit more of a grey horse there I mean filling in with the green stuff was a, was a big thing it was a really really kind of big thing uh, made a massive difference so there we go um, so very 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 happy with how these guys turned out I'll, uh, I'll finish off this hobby vlog showing off Urken brand and I'll continue doing a bit of uh, a bit of touching up and maybe do an army showcase when the whole army is done um, because I do have some additions to put into this army and paint in the future which I'll probably do one at a time which I will show you now and here they are the here are Rohan's Forgotten Heroes and they're Forgotten Heroes because they are heroes that apart from Eowyn uh, you can see the final fate of the Witch King Eowyn up there in the kind of top left uh, apart from her if I show you here there she is I think that she is a gorgeous looking model uh, but apart from her I haven't and don't really use any of the the other heroes here so glued together Merry um, I'd love to do a Rohirrim Merry on Pony conversion. Um, I have also put together my Gambling. Uh, my Gambling here has been ready for a while, just needs painting. Um, so these are going to be sort of, I'll do one hero at a time, uh, foot and mounted. I've got, uh, here we go, I've just stripped him and uh, put him together as of course Theoden. Uh, Helm's Deep Thayed and Metal, which I was really keen for. I got off Bradley Cottington. So I'm chuffed with that. Now I do have Defenders of Rohan um, Thayed and on foot, which is a lovely model and I do like him, but I actually do prefer this one. So I think I'm going to do him first and then um, I might actually do the other 
uh, the other side and there's a little bit of a display piece at another time uh, and because I've also got Defenders of Rohan uh, Hummer now so this model here which is nice uh, I actually cut up my other Hummer and uh, he's on a horse here but I can take him off and I've begun my, one of my first conversions uh, so I actually sawed off a, uh, a Royal Guard and then I, uh, I took the saw to Harmer and his top half and I've pinned those two pieces together and the next step is going to be uh, a bit of green stuff uh, for the transition in between. I'm also going to put a shield over uh, that bit there where the Royal Guard shield was uh, just to cover up some of that area and make that a bit easier. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing a bit of my first sculpting uh, with the cloak there. Uh, we'll sort of beef his, beef his cloak out a little bit more I think. Uh, in order to be able to do that um, but really really chuffed um, with the start that I've made on him uh, and then down here I also have Theodrid um, Theodrid I managed to get from Liam Freel not long ago Th Theodrid mounted really easy to get hold of I think he was in Battle Games in Middle Earth but the one on foot is a bit harder um, he's n I don't really like this model um, I really don't like the Theodrid model particularly I don't, I'm not a fan of the poses uh, in particular the face, but I'm hoping that I can do a paint job which does him justice. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I've already started looking up the different armors. I'm actually going to be using and uh, attaching uh, some of the shields from my saga uh, to Theodred um, and giving him a nice shield. So I think that'll make a difference. So yeah, this will be sort of the culmination of my Rohan project really. I think when once my repaint's uh, finished, I'll be doing one of these heroes at a time, so you'll be able to see hobby vlogs, we've seen these guys uh, progress and hopefully get them looking up to the kind of standard of the other Rohirrim heroes like Erkenbrand there. Uh, of course my defenders, uh, my defenders of Rohan AMO, which you have seen before, you can get him down there, there we go. Uh, and of course I don't want to forget, while I am talking about the Rohirrim, one model that I really, really, really need to give some time to um, is of course Knight of the Pelennor. Uh, and it might be some time before, I don't know, you know, I mean I should just get him done. I use I use his profile quite a lot I suppose, um, you know, and it's a lovely model. And I, I think one of the reasons I held back from painting was I was so terrified of making a mistake, um, but really Really I shouldn't be, really I should just go for it and I will probably use him. Um, so there we go, continuing up with the Rohirrim repaint and also finishing the project in total. So I hope that you're going to enjoy seeing my progress with that over the next few months. Probably next up, in next week's hobby vlog, you'll probably see me making a little bit of progress with a fiefdoms contingent um, as I work on various areas of Adam Marcel's Riverdale Knights that tie in quite nicely with getting on with some of these uh, fiefdoms in between as well. So if you enjoyed this hobby vlog, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. You can support your Hobbit host by checking the links in the video description below. Remember, if you back my Hot Gates Gaming Patreon, you are backing my content not just over there, but my ability to produce content going forwards here which is getting pretty tough I must admit uh, but we do enjoy doing this as a hobby and we want to be able to continue to do it regularly so guys make sure you continue to support your Hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle gaming